Okay. Well, uh, when first you mentioned codes, the first thing that popped into my mind was uh, error correcting codes, uh, which are uh, sort of, uh, they're actually around us all the time, but we don't think about it. So the idea is, you know, you, um, you, you need to transfer information in some form or store information, say, in a computer. And uh, errors can creep in. And of course, you know, the information is typically in a series of ones and zeros. Um, and so the idea is to uh, A, be able to detect whether or not errors have uh, crept in somewhere when you transmit information, let's say, from one point to another. Um, and better yet, even correct it if you can. So you can actually tell, oh no, this is not the right word. It must have been, you know, the following must have been meant to set. And the funny thing about this is, uh, so I, I actually ran into this stuff uh, through mathematics, because it turns out there's a nice mathematical connection. The idea is the following. So, you know, if you just transfer, transmit the same information multiple times, obviously you could just take the average or, or you know, say send a word three times, and, you know, if two of them are the same, you can assume that's probably what was meant. But that's a very inefficient way of doing it. So uh, a simple way of actually detecting whether an error has been made is to, you know, in, let's say some sequence of ones and zeros, just do what's called a parity check. So let's say there's uh, two ones and two zeros. You sum the ones. That's zero in binary. One plus one goes to zero. Um, or one zero, but you take the last bit. Um, and so then uh, with a parity check, you can at least see that an error was made. So what you've done is you've taken twice as many possible words, you've, you've taken the number of possible words and you've made twice as many. And so then you can only tell, oh, well, uh, an error has been made, but you don't know which error. <laughs> Turns out if you add more information, you can actually correct the error. And the way to think about this is all the possible words can be thought of as points in some high dimensional space. And if you spread them apart, then if an error is made, you move away from one of them, and you can actually go back to the right one, so to speak. In other words, if, you, if, if the words are this far apart, and you make an error that goes like, you know, that takes you this far, you can go back. And you can do that by, in a much more efficient way than just sending the same information multiple times. And the connection with mathematics that at least I ran into when I was doing more mathematics than what I do now, which is physics, um, was um, these, these points in high dimensional space can be thought of uh, as like the centers of spheres. And what you want to do is um, maximize the packing of those spheres in that high dimensional space. Think of, uh, you know, piling oranges in a pile, right? There's an obvious way we pack spheres. Turns out that was only even proven to be maximal fairly recently. Uh, but anyway, in high dimensional space, um, if these words with information, like ones and zeros, can be thought of as points in that space, then if you can separate them maximally, which you would do, which you would do by packing spheres, that's the maximum amount of stuff you can pile with a uniform distance between the centers of them. Um, anyway, so there's a connection between error correcting codes and sphere packing, so to speak. Um, and so, you know, a simple example would be like uh, a two-bit word, you know, like zero, 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 one, one, zero, or one, one. Well, those are four points in a square, square grid. Um, if uh, the actual words you transmitted are either zero, zero, or one, one, then you can tell that an error has been made if you're one, zero, or zero, one. But you can't tell where to go, which one was the correct word. If you add just one more bit, then you can. So you'd need to do that in three dimensions. Anyway, so on. Um, that's the basic idea. It turns out these error correcting codes are used all the time. So when you, uh, in a CD player, uh, errors can easily creep in and they can be corrected with a little bit of redundancy by using these error correcting codes. And, well, anyway, there's other, there's other places where